welcome to the second third second session of uh, scratch junior programming in this session we will learn more about sequencing so let's see what we are going to work on today let me show you a program which I already built a small animation you could say so I click on the green icon here on the top corner you see the cat moves with the ball and throws it in the basket so this time you can see the ball hopping in the air like jumping in the air so let's see how do you perform this task so I'll click on the home button I'll click on plus sign in the new project I've got the cat here already I would just uh, select the background at the top we would select a kind of a basketball background we will define the start area for the cat and now in this project we will introduce a second character now can you guess what's the second character here yes that's a ball right that's a basketball so we would click on the plus sign right below the cat we would select basketball here As you see there are loads of characters here we will place the ball right next to the cat so that it looks like the cat is holding it now if you see we've got two characters now each of this character has to be has to perform a task right the task of the cat is move towards the the basket and the task of the ball is again move towards the basket and hop on the basket and just fall down so now let's see how do we do it so first step we would do is we would start with the cat so I will select the cat I will click on the cat character on the top left corner and I will start I'll click on the yellow icon I'll click on the green flag I'll go on the, go on the blue icon now which is the motion icon and I'll give I'll estimate it like what eight steps let's see if okay no that's not eight so that needs about twelve okay I think 12 is good enough now what we need to do is now because we are moving the cat 12 steps forward we need to do the same for the basketball right so now I click on basketball on the left side and I perform the same operation I click on the yellow icon I take the green flag I click on the blue motion icon forward 12 steps reset on the top play now you see both of them are moving together right so we are almost there now the final step is I just need to hop the ball so do you want to hop the ball first so let's see we'll just try to hop the cat also after some time we just hop the ball for now so I make sure on the left hand side I have selected basketball now there is a new motion we're going to add hop which is here hop and estimated five steps hopping so let's run so we run the code and the ball hops in and comes down is that good enough okay probably the ball might need to move one more step so 13 steps and uh, we just rerun the code okay now it looks odd so let's keep it at 12 13 for both then we'll move 13 steps for the cat also so we move cat we reset and now when we play that looks good right let's like that looks good so let's try one more option there let's make the cat jump a little bit so it looks like the cat is moving in the front jumping and throwing the basketball so I will move 13 steps forward if you see on the left side we are coding the cat right now and two steps hop and here the basketball is five steps hop okay so now let's click on the green sign here oh so that looks good right so probably I'll hop the ball a little bit more because the cat is big in the size so let's see what happens when I change the ball hopping to 8 
Oh, that's that's pretty cool, right? Great, that looks like the cat is really putting the ball in the basket. And now, you to make sure you click on the end program. It's always a good programming practice to click on end program. And on the right hand side, you would go on project and save the project. So that was the second session which explained you on sequencing. Now what we'll do is we will perform one more sequencing option this wherein, wherein we would also look at the options of left and right apart from forward and backward left and right hop you've already seen. So again we click on new project. Now this time I don't need the cat so I would just select it for some time as soon as I select it for some time I get a cross on the top left corner I click on it cat disappears I click on the background and now I want to make it a small kind of an aquarium kind of an environment so I will select the aquarium underwater background and I'll click on the plus sign on the left hand side and this time what I'll do is I will select like an underwater diver so we got a driver here. So now what, what we'll do is we will make the diver perform some operations here. Some kind of, you know, moving forward, up, down, and now experiment with what is turned left and right, right? So in session one, we had seen what is forward, move right, move left, move up, down, turn right, turn left. Now there is a slight difference between move right and turn right. You'll notice what's that? and hope you've seen this also go home we'll see we'll try and see the operation so that we cover up this entire section of blue block today just to understand it's really simple so I click on the yellow block I start with the program I click on the front arrow I make the diver go like four steps ahead and now what I do is I click on turn right and I turn right three steps, three, you know, scratch blocks, uh, three steps, you could say for now. And I click on the green icon. So you see, it moves. So when I press three, it turns right three steps. Now, if I make it as six, see what happens. So that becomes inverted, right? So six steps is half a circle, if you see. Right? Now let's see what happens if I make it as 12 steps. I reset it. Oh, that's a full circle if you see. So how 12 steps, how a clock has 12, st 12 um, you know, numbers on the clock. So when it, uh, when, it, when it finishes the entire cycle from 1 to 12, it's like it moves around. The same way, turn right works now let's put turn left now make it as 12 and see what happens now so guess what happens and then it moves the other ways around right so it goes in the front turns clockwise then anti-clockwise easy for children to understand and now if I put this option that is go home option which I normally don't like to use it but it just if you see it just jumps back it doesn't look like it's an animation it just reverts back to its original position right so if I wanted to move it back nicely what I would have done is remove this go home option and out here what I could do is change the direction right four steps so now when you see I move it I will move it left side so earlier we moved it right side now we'll move it on the left side and there it goes back so that completes your session two which was totally on sequencing if you uh, it's always a good practice to save so sequencing controls you could say sequencing sequencing activity you could name it as and um, so that completes our entire s session two totally on sequencing you see it's quite easy for the children and I'm sure by now the children are really enjoying 
So see you 